Hey there! I often see questions on forums about Wise and Unreal Engine and Special Audio and most of the time they're not even questions, they're more like requests for help, uh, speeding up the process of setting up a project with AK Special Audio Volumes, right? Now, while there isn't a magic make everything look good with one click button just yet, I found a couple of techniques that help me do this pretty quickly at least noticeably faster than I was doing it six months ago when I just started working with Wise Special Audio, right? And let's not forget that setting up these volumes, portals and reverb zones and stuff, is one of those rare chances for us sound designers, technical sound designers and video game audio engineers of all kinds to finally work with our favorite background music, just like those lucky artists and programmers and HR and managers and all those people do. As a quick example, let's look at this level and specifically this one spatial audio volume on it. Someone gave it a pretty unfortunate shape and that someone was of course me a few months back. The spatial audio volumes don't intersect well, and actually they should not intersect in such a scenario a priori. Some areas aren't even covered at all, and there are inaccuracies here and there. I even had to complicate the logic using different priorities for each volume. Now I prefer to make everything clean and precise right from the start, so I don't end up with these questionable workarounds and so the entire level architecture is clearly handled, right? So let's go ahead and delete this spatial audio volume entirely and start fresh. Audio Kinetic has an awesome feature called Fit to Geometry, which works really well for most rectangular, trapezoidal and other simple structural shapes. But as you can see, the moment we're dealing with something even a bit more complex geometrically, fit to geometry can't handle it properly anymore. And honestly, it's not supposed to, it really starts to depend on, on the specific situational strategy of the sound designer at that point, okay? And here's tip number one. Make a quick sketch of your room or the volume you're working on. Yes, like a boomer on paper. It's the fastest way, trust me. You also might want to split it into a few sections, like I'm doing here by dividing the top and bottom halves because they are different. Make sure to note all the angles and planes and try to stick to the rough proportions of the size if, if possible. Although that part isn't essential, but at least for me it makes things a bit easier. Now let's switch to brush editing mode and select the pan tool. At this stage I like to find some recognizable architectural elements so that when I switch to the top down view I can more easily figure out the layout of the room I'm interested in and where its boundaries are. For example, in this case I can spot this zigzag wall and a large block on the right and a small corner on the top right and so on. So I'm ready to start drawing the shape of my room. Just click somewhere in the viewport to begin and know that each point is placed by pressing the spacebar and to undo the last point use escape instead of ctrl z. Keep that in mind. Also, I prefer using a large snapping grid value to make setting right angles easier. As you can see, I've set it to 100 units this time. At the end, don't forget to close the shape by coming back to the exact point where you started. And now we can start adjusting our new brush volume. I prefer to click on the four corner points of each plane, but that's just my personal preference. It's actually faster to click directly on the surface of the plane. Now let's pull our plane to the boundaries of the desired area. It's easy to find them because the lines outlining our brush volume will slightly change color when they intersect with objects, which is super handy. We'll adjust the individual axis like this. Now I'm going to speed up the video a bit so you don't waste time watching me drag each side back and forth repetitively.
Unfortunately, I forgot to record this part, but I'll explain it. At the very end, it's really convenient to use the side projection to set the upper and lower boundaries of our volume. It's much faster than trying to select all the planes on each side, slogging through misclicks and polygons you may have missed. By the way, this is how you can move the entire plane at once without clicking on four points. And here's an important tip, if you hold down Ctrl Shift while moving something in Unreal Engine, the camera will move along with you, which makes things so much easier. Now I'm moving on to the lower half of my room. I've carefully checked all the corners and surrounding areas and I'm happy to say that we can cover the lower part of this room with a simple rectangle. So I won't even bother using the brush pen tool, I'll just insert a special audio volume right away and start stretching it to fit the room. The idea here is to cover the remaining space and make sure it clearly overlaps with our upper half, so we don't leave any gaps, empty pockets or missed zones. Once we're sure all our volumes cover everything we need, let's convert the brush into an AK Spatial Audio Volume. You can find this option in the Details tab by typing Convert Actor or just scrolling down a bit. Now we've got two Spatial Audio Volumes and it's time to merge them. To do this, switch to Modeling Mode, go to the Mesh tab and select Union, then hit Accept. And voila! Our simple volumes are now combined into a more complex one. Let's go ahead and set up the reverb and background ambience for our new room. Now I recommend doing two things. First, run around the map and make sure all those tricky corners work smoothly. Make sure there aren't any spots where your character model might clip into the wall by a single pixel, yet causing the sound to cut out. And second, always keep your project organized. Structure everything into folders and give them clear, systematic names. This will save you tons of time on projects bigger than just one or two rooms, and it'll make life easier for your teammates who won't have to struggle with disorganized hierarchies. Instead, they'll understand what they're looking at just from the names when they come across your objects in the project. Thanks for watching this video. I hope it's helpful for anyone just starting out with audio kinetic spatial audio. I'd also be super grateful if you'd share your own tips, tricks and know-how on spatial audio. For example, has anyone figured out how to use subtractive volumes for blocking out levels with spatial audio volumes? I haven't managed to figure that one out yet, or even if it's possible, let me know if you found a way. Thanks again and see you next time sometime.